If you're wondering what an uluk fruit is, well, they were looking at a tree and they went, ooh, look! That's not really what happens. Hey everybody, what is up? My name is Mackenzie. And I'm Jonathan. We are husband and wife, and we'd like to welcome you to Paradise. And today we're taking a look at Uluk by Hexi Studio, coming to Kickstarter real soon here on August 30th. Yeah, so we're really excited to dive into this game, Uluk, because Hexi Studio is actually on the Bark Avenue team. Yeah, so yeah. they did our whole video that you saw on the Kickstarter page. So they do a lot of animations. They also do a lot of miniatures and 3D models. Uh, if you've played like Nancy Narking, has mm -hmm. some really good ones. And then they also have have a whole line of games including the Star Scrappers universe uh, and a whole bunch of other goodness. So they are veterans of Kickstarter and they're back with a new Euro. Now they say that the sacred Uluk tree is what sort of birthed the world or so these are what these tribers are and these tribesmen are sort of seeking after. And so in the game we're going to be feasting and hunting and gathering and trying to develop technology and build monuments to those gods to celebrate just this wonderful world that we live in. And if you're wondering what an Uluk fruit is, well, they were looking at a tree and they went, ooh, look, and now we have Uluk fruits. That's not really what happened, <laughs> but <laughs> that's what I thought. That's what I told when we played it. So the basic idea of Uluk is that you are trying to become the most prosperous and feed your people so you are the best and wealth, most well fed in all of the land. So you do this by, you send out your different workers to go and hunt and gather different resources. And those are going to change each round based on how many people go out to those resources and it takes it away or how many people don't. Now my first observation with our first play is that that score track is huge. The, the whole thing wraps around the whole board and I think our first game we ended up somewhere on the first side. Yeah, ours <laughs> we were, were like, very happy. How in the world do you? And, I mean our tribes people were pretty happy. Uh, they were but, <laughs> You, you have the opportunity to basically recruit and make more tribes people. Mm -hmm. um, so you're probably having babies. Um, so <laughs> you get more and more tribes people that you then will have to send out and feed them as well. And I think where this game really shines is that uh, you really have to get a big tribe going that eats a lot of food. Yes. Uh, and so you really have to think about that mental puzzle, that economy that you were just talking about of some of the resources are going to dwindle when they're overused. On your personal player board, you have this sort of like resource conversion chart from the raw things that you create to what you can grind them or cut them into to what you can bake and stew and brew them into. So you have a lot of choices on how you do that. Now you need to send out your tribesmen to both collect the food but also to process the food. And food can expire at different rates in different states. So if you leave it as raw fruit, that'll last till the next round. But if you start cutting it up or grinding it up, it may expire after the end of the, the round. So you really have to process only what you're gonna use, mm -hmm. um, which is an interesting challenge. Now what's also cool is that every food can be processed in a different way. So you could process it as something that's edible, or you can stew it down to poison, uh, which you can put on the tips of your spears and send out workers to the like meat-based foods uh, where you can collect more by having poison. Um, I just thought that was a really kind of cool, interesting, I love when you can spend essentially your victory points to get you further in the game, and I think it worked really well. Now, what happens if you aren't able to feed your people that round? Well, you don't lose, but you do get hunger tokens, so they will get hungry, and that will take away points at the end of the game. So you don't yeah. want your people mm -hmm. to go hungry, and once they start going hungry, it can be difficult to get back on track because yeah. people need to eat. So all food is not created equal. There are certain types of food that give you different abilities. Like the green food is going to give you one point of happiness if you're able to achieve that. It's like super good food. Yeah, super good food. <laughs> and then there's the super good food, uh, which is like for this, just the celebrations or like what I think is like the ceremony. It's like you combine oh, yeah. it together. And That's it, not even for eating, it's just for partying. It's just for yeah. partying. <laughs> so there are, are a lot of different opinions about games where you have to feed your own people, where you have to do this. It's a mechanic that I've seen come up quite a bit. Um, so what do they do that's unique in this game? Um, mm -hmm. What I think is really cool, uh, first of all about sort of that economy system we talked about, there is a strategy to using but not using too much. Um, if you send the right amount of workers to each of those spaces, those resources are not going to dwindle. Um, but if you send even less, they might even grow. Uh, and so there's this sort of this opportunity to do that. Now that in itself uh, is interesting, but what is also pretty cool is that if certain resources get completely depleted, 
other resources will grow. Yeah. Uh, so where I found this really interesting is that, uh, you know, if, if the insects got completely depleted, then the plants would grow. Uh, and so it's like they're not eating them up as much, there's some other things going on. Um, so I really liked that what would happen to some resources would affect what would happen to other resources as the environment and economy that they've created is, is like shifting. Yeah, it made yeah. thematic sense. And if you were able to spare enough workers, you could go worship different gods. And if you plant it outright, those gods would help prosper certain um, food items later down the road. Yes, really yeah. Helpful. So as soon as those were completely uh, sort of worshipped and built, then you would you'd be praying to the god of that food. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And let's talk yeah. about those food gods. Like, they're really awesome. So in the base game, the non-kickstarter, you can um, get the this is the cardboard standees, which is yeah, beautiful yeah. art. Mm -hmm. And then um, one of the levels in the Kickstarter is that you can get the minis, which we were able to try out. And Hexy knows their minis. Like we said at the beginning, that's like their thing. Like they like they do tons, like they, they're so good at minis. They actually yes. did some concept art for Bark Avenue for some minis. Like I really enjoyed them. And they're really great for painting too. They got a amazing illustrator who did a great job with the box, great job with the cards. The cards have all these cool different tools and inventions that you're creating. And in addition to that, the board itself. I love when a board uh, just has, you know, you see the village, you see the, the huts where they're going, all this stuff. I, I think it looks really, really nice. This is going to be a game for your mid to mid heavy Euro players. This is specifically people who love worker placement. They love games that are all about resource collection and processing. It does that very well. Um, so all that, you know, if you like moving cubes and exploding things that way, this will be a game that you will enjoy. Things that you may not be a fan of in this game. So this is definitely classified under that like Euro where things are very abstractly sort of like measured. So all those discs that you're using that uh, they do say, you know, they're food on them, but it's not going to be specific to the food that you're collecting. Inevitably, the puzzle that you're solving is I'm turning one disc into two discs. I'm turning three discs into four discs and then I'm gonna divide by two and, and do this stuff. So it, inevitably sort of like it becomes a math puzzle more than like, oh, I've got these cute little berries and these cute little things. Um, so you definitely have to be the kind of person who likes it to just be abstract and likes to solve that puzzle. Overall, I thought this was a solid worker placement euro where you have the option to sort of compete for things as well as collaboratively, but you wanna have the most um, sort of build towards things. Uh, I thought it worked well. So we know for a fact that the publisher is Hexi Studio is a fabulous company to work with because they helped us out with Bark Avenue. Yeah, and yeah. I know they're if also you back there it, a Kickstarter. Yeah, they've had lots of games come out. I know so. you'll be in good hands with them because they're wonderful. All right, everyone, and that is our overview of Ulook, which is coming to Kickstarter August 30th. You can click the link down below to find out more and to visit their Kickstarter page. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can know whenever we put out a new video. And we'll see you next time. Happy, Happy playing! playing.